Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Uh, I have 1256 Central Time, so we'll give it uh, seven or eight more minutes and then we will get started. So uh, feel free to take a quick break, come back, and we'll get started in just a few moments. Thank you again for joining. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Closing Order Loop and Other Hidden Gems and Next Gen webinar. I see a lot of familiar faces uh, in the session today. So or a lot of familiar names in the session today. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, to those of you that I may not have met before, my name is Shauna Wilburn and I'm one of the trainers here at EMADOPS and couldn't be more excited to share some of this content with you today. Uh, closing the order loop configuration and workflow within the application is one of my favorite enhancements. I know it came, you know, maybe a couple of years ago with one of the next gen upgrades, but it's by far one of my favorite features that next gen has released as of late because it really, it really does meet a need within the practice. And so I couldn't be more excited to share some of these tips and tricks with you today, as well as some of my other favorite uh, little hidden gems within the application. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as a reminder, everyone is in listen only mode today. So you do not have the ability to unmute your phone. You certainly can uh, put in a question in the questions window. Please be sure and use the questions window specifically. We have some team members on the call monitoring that and they will jump in and stop me. If you have questions, please put them in the questions window when we're talking about that section because in this webinar, it's kind of unique. We're not really talking about just one topic. We're going to go from topic to topic. So if you have questions, uh, please put them in the questions window so that we can be sure and address those uh, when we're talking about that topic during that section of the presentation. I do have a PowerPoint that I'll be using here in the beginning, and then we'll probably dive into the application. It'll be a little bit more interactive um, as we go through the specifics. But the PowerPoint does go through all the configuration and support that with not only the details of where the configuration that I'm going to review today is housed, but also with screen prints. So don't worry too much about taking notes. Of course, I'm never going to tell anyone not to take notes, but I want you to know that this PowerPoint and a copy of the recording of the session will be sent out to you within a couple of days of this webinar. So um, sit back, relax, kind of soak in the information. Hopefully everybody will leave today with a new little tip or trick that you didn't know before you came to the session. And again, please don't hesitate to uh, ask any questions as we go through the content today. So you may have may or may not be familiar with EMAD apps. Uh, EMAD apps is a healthcare IT company. When you think about Next Gen, uh, you can think about EMAD apps. We do all things related to Next Gen. We do training, we do implementation, we do upgrades, we do uh, support, extra set of hands. If you have someone out on leave, um, whatever the case may be, uh, we can probably help you with it if it's related to Next Gen. So please don't hesitate if there ever comes up an opportunity within your practice where you could use some additional help or maybe want a little bit of expertise so the upgrade, you don't have to spend as much time on your upgrade or something like that, please think about us and give us a call. We'd love to put our hat in the ring to potentially help out. But as, as advertised, the uh, kind of the headliner of the presentation today is closing the order loop. And like I mentioned before, this is one of my favorite things that NextGen's released in the past few years. Because before NextGen put this content within the application, closing the order loop was a two-step process. So to kind of give you an overview and put into context what we're talking about today, what we're talking about with closing the order loop is you put an order into the system using, you know, your normal referral template um, or whatever, you know, diagnostic template or whatever the case may be. And then that third party sends us a report back, whether it be the provider that we refer to, a diagnostic report, what have you, they send that back on paper and your medical records or HIM team has to scan that and import it into your application. And then ultimately, in a lot of cases, it's going to go to your provider to be signed in their PAQ. So that all worked well, but the issue was with that is that it didn't actually address the order itself. Hey, so Shauna, can I stop you real quick? Um, sure. I have a couple people not hearing things. Um, okay. Are you hearing me okay, Holly? I am. Okay. Okay. Let's just give them a moment then to see if there's uh, something maybe on their PC possibly. 
it could be okay i got a note from okay. uh thank you brad uh it, it holly we might uh message uh christy and okay. she might have to switch from phone audio to computer audio you know how that goes that might yeah. be the issue there okay thanks okay that is the only thing that i can think of on that one i sure hope she's able to get that resolved Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm going to give it just a few seconds to see if uh, if those of you that couldn't hear um, can get that resolved and then we'll we'll just press on because I do have a lot of content to cover today. I want to make sure I'm able to get through it. Okay. So hopefully we're able to get those phone issues resolved. I sure hate that. Um, but hopefully most people can hear and, and the technology is working well for us. I'm going to keep keep going, but Holly, if you get any more complaints, please stop me and we'll we'll take another pause if we need to. Okay. So just to kind of resume what we we're talking about, you know, in, in prior versions of the application, you make the order and then we get the, re the response back to that order. And it was kind of like a two step process. You know, you would scan in the results it would go to the PAQ in a lot of cases, depending on your system set up to for the provider to sign off on. But we still had this piece that wasn't getting addressed, which was the order. The order still sitting out there, even though we scanned in the result and maybe even the provider signed off on it. Maybe we've even called the patient and, and wrapped it all up in a bow. We still have the order sitting out there that needs to be completed in most cases. And so this closing the order loop configuration is what NextGen implemented to allow us to address that. Now, a lot of clinics had workflows to where when HIM scanned that in, they would go in there and mark that order completed, or maybe the providers upon signing in their PAQ. I know all the providers on the call just cringe, so forgive me for that, but some groups did have the workflow where the providers would go mark the order completed. Um, and it just was really not an ideal process because there was a gap in the process. And so um, a little while back, NextGen gave us um, the closing the order loop configuration. And so this is not brand new. So anybody that's on the call, you may be thinking, well, I've, I've seen this and I've heard of it. Absolutely, it's been in the application, but really what we're talking about today is just making sure everybody knows how to configure this and that you are able to use this because it is a really fantastic tool. So I'm gonna click over to uh, my application and kind of go through the demo with you. There are a few configuration steps that are necessary in order to address the closing the order loop uh, workflow. So the first one is going to be your document types. So within your document types, you have to identify all of your document types that could potentially be an order. So when I look at look at my list here, and obviously this is a demo system, so it, it may not be exactly like yours. If, if I I don't think I've seen a list this short in a clinic, in an actual live clinic in some time. So, you know, kind of take this database with a grain of salt. Obviously it's our demo database, all the identified and all that good stuff. So, um, but when we look through here, like business office correspondence, um, you know, a narcotics contract, those are not things that are gonna be order related. So there would be no need to update those document types. We only need to update and set the configuration for the document types that might be in order. So like cardiology reports could very much be in order. And so here you have a checkbox called potential order results. For every document type, everything on this list that could potentially be in order, you wanna go through your configuration in production and check mark this one box. Check marking this one box in your document type configuration will allow your scanning staff, whether that be, you know, medical records, HIM, whatever the staff is that's scanning those reports in or, you know, importing them from an electronic file, depending on your setup, this one box will give them the ability to link to orders so that this closing the order loop process can work. So this is step number one to go through all of your document types and mark this checkbox for every document type that could potentially be in order. So for here, just note that I marked cardiology reports. We're gonna use that in our example when we walk through the workflow together um, just after we finish up the configuration items here. And then the second configuration, there's only two, two configuration components, your document type and practice preferences. So when I go into practice preferences, I have a couple of things that I need to set for the practice as well. So when practice preferences loads up for me, we're gonna go into the orders module here on the left-hand side. 
on the from the orders module on the left hand side on this first all tab which is what it defaults to we're going to talk about this bottom section here this is the second component of the configuration for closing the order loop so on the left hand side we first need to identify our different types of order and where those orders are coming from within your practice so everybody will have to make a different choice here or potentially make different choices here so when you order diagnostics or radiology, when you order an X-ray, an MRI, a CT, do you order it from the diagnostic template or do you order it from the orders module? You just need to make the selection that's appropriate for your practice based on your workflow. Same with labs. Labs, are you ordering from a lab template, which would be the adaptive content engine, or are you ordering from the orders module? Again, make the appropriate selection for your practice. And then for referrals, you only have the uh, template option available adaptive content engine because you can't order those from the orders module so you only have the one for it so everybody will pick adaptive content engine for referrals and then for lab and diagnostic you would want to choose the one that's appropriate based on your workflow and then on the right hand side you can designate what status you want that order to go to when this process is in place so what that means is when the result or the report comes back your medical records team scans that in and they say, yes, this is tied to this order. What do you want to make that status for the order? Completed or results received? And then you have diagnostics, labs, and referrals listed there as well. So just make the appropriate selection for each order. Again, based on what your practice would prefer and what works with your um, system settings and your current workflow the best. There is no right or wrong on this. So just make the choices based on what would be best for your specific organization. So those are the two configuration items that we have to set up, document types and practice preferences, and then we're ready to see this workflow in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to order management, and in preparation for our session today, I already placed a referral for our example today to cardiology. So when we go to referrals, you can see here that I have an ordered referral on today's date, today's encounter that I created just earlier today. To cardiology to evaluate and treat. So let's say this patient went to the cardiologist. Now we have the report back. So now I'm sitting here. I'm your medical records team member. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do your medical records team members probably doing a batch, but I'm just going to do a quick scan and file for ease of use today. No right or wrong. And I'm going to say that this is the cardiology report for Grace Adler. I have to choose my document type. You notice at this point, nothing is different at all. If you've, if you've done any scanning, this is exactly the way it's always looked because nothing changes on this screen until you pick the document type because the document type is gonna control your fields as it always has based on your configuration. And then when we pick cardiology reports, you're gonna notice this new section here at the bottom. Whereas if I chose something different that did not have the potential order result checkbox, it would not have that information at the bottom. It would not have that window. So because I checkmarked that potential order result box on the document type configuration, I'm now getting this new section on my filing window. So I'm just gonna grab my active patient and I'm gonna choose my provider, just you know my normal workflow. And then I have one additional thing here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna kind of toggle over to referrals and all of my open referral orders are gonna display here for me. So in the case of, of this document that I'm filing, I kinda of have to look at the document and, and kind of identify what it is so I know what to look for in the system. So now I know this is a cardiology report, I can come to referrals and easily see that this is my cardiology report. It's definitely not bariatric surgery. Cardiology, that makes sense, so I'm gonna link that up. The trickiest thing about this process is most people do not have their window this big. Most people's window looks more like this. This is how I've always used it in the past. And that will be a little gotcha in this process because I have people all the time like, Shauna, I checkmarked the box and I filed it and everything it looked, looked like it worked, but my order's still showing is ordered. It's not completed like it looked like it should work. It's all because of this little complete button right here. When you link up, when I'm saying, when I link this document that I'm filing right now to this order in the system, 
I have to click this save button or this complete button so that it will tie that together and cause all that logic to close the order loop to fire. So when I, when I check mark the referral in this case and I save it to the patient's chart, it's going to look at my practice preference that I set. And in the case of referrals, I said to mark it complete. So it's marking that order as complete right now. It drops off my list because it's no longer a pending order. And now I just do my normal steps to uh, file my document. So the only thing that changes is the bottom part of that window and taking that one very small step of linking the document to the open order in the application. Now if I come back into order management, into my same chart, Grace Adler, I can now see that my 331 order for cardiology is completed because that's what that's the status I chose in my practice preferences. And then I have this nice little comment, C scan DM image or C scan document management image, so that I know there's a scan document affiliated with this with this referral. So a really nice workflow to save you some internal steps, some potential um, manual legwork that you've been using. I highly recommend this pro this process, this this workflow. It's really great. Um, ultimately, we want to get our orders completed in the system. You know, that's always the best practice, but it's always, you know, one of those things that we spend a lot of time cleaning up. You know, it, it may be a situation to where you're concerned about your uh, health maintenance staff you know, picking the order to tie that to, and I definitely respect that. I've heard that concern from a lot of clinics because those, those staff may not be clinical. But just think, even if they were able to do 50% of what comes through, that's 50% of your orders that you're not gonna have on an audit report or have to do the legwork to clean up later. Maybe it's not 100%, maybe it's 25%, but is it not worth it to connect what we can connect, feel good about, be sure, that we're connecting it to the right thing and anything else you're unsure about, you just skip the linking step and then fall back on your current workflow that you have in place. There's nothing that when you go into document management, just because you have that set up, there's nothing on that filing window that's gonna require you to link it. I showed you the workflow on how to link it, but there's nothing that's gonna make you do that. So it's definitely your discretion. If you feel like you've got the right thing, you can tie it together. Um, if you make a mistake, you can unlink it. There's an option there for that too. So there's really not a lot of downside to closing that order loop and when we can tying that information together and maybe saving us a few steps in the application. Hey Shauna, um, what version are you in? I am on 5.93.843, uh, but this particular feature has been around for several versions. Um, Man, I sure don't want to start naming a version of when it came out. I, I, I would probably say UD3 maybe to throw a dart at the board, but I, I don't know that for sure. But it's been around several versions. Any other questions? Yes, I have another one coming in. Um, by linking the scan document to the open order, would that document show in the order management results section window in order management? Or is this wishful thinking? <laughs> uh, wishful thinking. Um, I would love for that to happen. Uh, but no, order management is still just the, the data, just the specifics, the details, the text, um, the image you're still going to have to, you know, come over here to categories and, and get to it that way. I'd love to see that happen, but um, it's, it's not, that's not a part of it just yet. What about orders that come back into the PAQ via interface? So anything that's coming in, you know, via the interface, this would, would not be applicable for because, you know, you have to tie them together. But depending on your interface, a lot of times the interface can be set up to to update the order. Like for example, when you think about labs, if you have a bi-directional lab interface, it leaves NextGen with your PRO number. And then when it comes back into NextGen, it goes right to the PAQ and right to the patient's chart against that same PRO number. So those statuses, you know, like labs should definitely be updating for you. But if you're think if you have more like a diagnostic interface, which is a little less common than a lab, um, I would work with your interface vendor because if that if you have a bi-directional interface, 
um, there should be some options to tie that together and have that update automatically for you. Now, if you only have a unidirectional interface, that becomes a little bit more challenging. Like if you're only getting the results in and you're sending the order over on paper, that makes it a little bit more challenging. But uh, if you have a bi-directional interface, I definitely think it'd be worth a call to your vendor to see if you could tie that together and uh, NextGen would, would allow you to do that. That's a good question. Any other questions on this section before we move on to the next little hidden gem? I was on okay. mute. Okay. Um, I have a question. We have bi-directional okay. lab interfaces. Any suggestions on how to progress that work? Um, yeah, if you have a, I mean, I think it's, you know, pretty common if you have the, if you have the interface through NextGen, you know, there's a PRO number that's tied to each of your orders that shows LO here, but actually on the HL7 side, it's usually a PRO number that ties that together. And um, I would think that your, your lab order should be updating when the status should be updating when that result comes back in. I would definitely check into that. That may be something that could just be turned on and tested real quick in your test system and put into production. Um, I know NextGen commonly does that. Um, you know, I can't say when your interface was implemented specifically, but if it was a while ago, it might have been before that option was available. So it'd be well worth looping back around to that. I'm sure there's some considerations with the lab as well, but if it's Quest or LabCorp for sure, um, I've seen, seen that working very commonly. Got it, thank you. Um, if you, uh, you can also too, if you have like a more of a local lab, you know, Quester Lab Core, the national labs, and you may have an interface in place already, but if you have more of a local lab and you'd like to explore that a little more and don't really have a resource, maybe it was set up some time ago, give us a call at eMedApps. We could um, definitely put you in touch with the right people to troubleshoot that and see if that might be an option for you. Okay, so moving on to the next item on the list, we're going to talk a little bit about chronic conditions. This is another one of my uh, favorite little hidden gems. It's something that's been in the application, again, for some time, but a lot of people just don't know how to use it, and I know how it is. When you're in the clinic, you're so busy, you don't have time to sit down and, and you know, research things and figure out, you know, how to use it, and it's like sometimes you take these updates just to get the regulatory requirements, but we don't always take advantage of the new features that they have to offer. And I think this is one that, again, came a few versions ago. It's been around for a little bit now. And it's found right here in your reason for visit panel. I'm just kind of opening up my reason for visit on the soap. This is an out of the box next gen soap template. It's not customized at all. And you have this button here at the bottom of the panel for reason for visit called chronic conditions. So when I'm looking at my reason for visit, if you're doing an initial diagnosis on a patient, diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, whatever the case may be, um, you know, you've got to work that up, do the full HPI, things like that. But specifically, when you have the patient coming in that maybe has two or three chronic conditions, it's like, oh, you know, Miss such and such is on the schedule again. She's been doing so good. Her labs are in good shape. Her meds are working well for, no adverse side effects. She's just basically here for her recheck and her med refill. That's where the chronic conditions button should be there for you as a provider or for your providers. So when I click the chronic conditions button, it's gonna almost launch like a mini visit all in one. Obviously now the physical exam isn't here, but a lot of the things that support your visit as far as like the HPI, the plan, the diagnosis, um, lots of things are here and available for you. So this chronic conditions button kind of becomes your one-stop shop for documenting those follow-up chronic condition visits, the med refills where everything's going well. Now, obviously, if they have a big problem or something, you might have to dive in and do the full, you know, review and workup. But when things are going well, they're just here um, to check in for you to reevaluate them. This is a great template to use. So to introduce you and kind of give you a little bit of information about this template, the first couple of things I'm going to show you are for the patient as a whole. 
So you have this overall chronic conditions HPI. That applies to every chronic condition that the patient has. So when you look, chronic conditions or problems, as NextGen calls them, are listed here. So my patient, Grace Adler, has hypertension and diabetes. So if I put a chronic condition HPI comment up here in the top, this comment applies to all problems. Okay, so this is a global comment that applies to everything. And then another thing to point out here is this little blue link for the flow sheet. I don't know if you're like me, sometimes all these links and different things kind of run together and I'm, I'm on autopilot documenting because, you know, you know where everything that you need is in the system. This little flow sheet button can be quite handy. It only applies for certain things. There's only seven diseases that it applies to, but asthma, coronary artery disease, depression, so on and so forth. You can see them listed across the top. But if you pick one of them, you can see past visits and information, key elements from the visit listed here for you for your review. Again, only seven are here. So, you know, we can't do much about changing that. That's not a configuration thing. That's just what, what's provided by NextGen. But for the seven that are there, it is a great tool to come in and review past information. And it puts the most current information in the first column and it gets older as you scroll over to the right and you look at past visits. So great tool just to be aware of when it's applicable. And again, it applies to, you know, any any of the problems within those seven that the flow sheets honor. So those two kind of things are great tools, great resources for the patient as a whole. Now to get into specifically documenting the problem itself, I can click on the problem. If I had documented a previous note, it would automatically show here for me. See most recent note, or you have most recent note by current user. So if I had documented in this template before, and now they're here again for their three month or six month follow up med refill, that note would show. And so it almost gives you like a little reminder of what was documented last time. And you could go in, edit, change it, document today, however you see fit. You have your my phrase functionality here. So great tool for, you know, those kind of common types of notes you might put in. And then you also have an option to view all the past notes. So the most recent note will default in here for your documentation for today. But you do have the opportunity to look at all the past notes as well. Should you want to see any of the past information for your consideration for the visit today? So super handy, something that everybody wants to be able to see past information and information to carry forward. This template has it, whereas in family practice, we don't have a lot of that. Uh, other specialties has a little carry forward opportunity, you know, ophthalmology, a little orthopedics, but family practice doesn't have that as much in NextGen. And so this is a great opportunity to take advantage of some of that technology that NextGen has provided to us and make this visit a little bit quicker, a little bit easier on the person that's documenting it. You do have an assessment status that's required here, so it's going to default your assessment for you. Should you need to change it, you could, or I can just document a uh, assessment for today. We're going to say that Grace is controlled today. I have my HPI documentation box here. I have my patient plan and my provider plan listed for me. So going back to the HPI box, you've got a lab review, which is pretty handy to show you past lab information. You also have a screening questions option. Kind of similar, kind of sort of similar to the flow sheet. Screening questions are only available for certain things. So not every diagnosis will have screening questions available, but those that have them, this is wonderful. And not to completely get on a separate sidebar, but if you don't know, these are configurable. Catch that, configurable, not customization, not customized, but configurable. You can set these up in your NextGen system. It's configuration that NextGen provides and it upgrades with you. So there's no tax on making these your own and really using these screening questions. Um, these are most often used in care guidelines, but they're here available for us as well in the chronic condition. So um, a great opportunity to get some of those common questions for each of those diseases answered. You have exclusions here if you need to document any exclusions for your meaningful use. Um, again, some of this you may be thinking, well, I would never document that. 
Absolutely. But remember, this is the one stop shop. So lots of things are on this one very small template, just depending on what you might need or want to do. Then you've got your patient plan, as I mentioned, your provider plan. You've got your common phrases, your my phrases. Take advantage of those. And then once you document all that you want to document, you click add update and that adds it to today's visit for you so that you have that information now documented in today's assessment. See how that one's down there now with my status of control. Remember when I put that in? So now it's part of today's assessment and you just did all that documentation in this one template, in this one screen. Again, you still got to do your physical exam, but this is such a nice function to have all this data and all these tools and resources right at your fingertips. And then what you do for the next problem is you just rinse and repeat. I did diabetes. Now I click on hypertension and I go through that same exercise again. Now, remember when I change problems, my comment applied because remember that comment up at the top is for everything. It's for today's visit. My flow sheet would be the same, but all the information down here clears out and allows me to enter the information for hypertension now. So if the patient had three or four things, you could just boom, 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 boom down the problem list and document that information here. Again, let me reemphasize, this is not for new diagnosis. You know, you've got to do your full HPI workup and all your, you know, traditional documentation elements. But this is a really great tool for the follow-ups and the patients that are doing well to save you a lot of clicks and a lot of keystrokes going through the full SOAP workup. Any questions on the chronic conditions workflow? Doesn't look like we have any on this one. So I'll keep cruising along. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to put them into the questions panel. We'll be sure and loop back to those. So the next thing I wanted to talk about today with you is edi editing medication favorites. Medication favorites are a fantastic tool. This has been around for as long as I can remember on NextGen. Um, but the beauty of what I want to show you is how to edit your medication favorites. So most of you probably know and have used medication favorites where you know you can't do much from the all screen. You've got to go over, you know, to the, to the various tabs that you have and the subgroupings, which make up the all screen. But when I come over to these subgroupings, if I right click on the med and say edit in my medication favorites, I can assign a quantity, refill, quite a few things here. I have quite a few things that are available to me, in particular the SIG as well. So what, I, what you can do is come into your medication favorites, give a quantity, give a number of refills. Every time you prescribe that medication, it's going to save you from having to key that information in. So I put a quantity of 30 and three refills. So I'm going to just prescribe this medication for today. And you're going to see when it pops into my medication screen that uh, I have a quantity of 30 and three refills pre-populated for me based on my medication favorites. So saving you keystrokes, saving you time. You don't have to fill these common things out. Used to when we could do a lot more with units that was super available because you could say one tube, one bottle, things like that. A lot of that functionality has been taken away as of late because of regulatory requirements to make those SIGs and information a little bit more specific. But you still have great functionality from that feature. I all the time see providers prescribing meds and having to put, you know, quantity of 30 and three refills on, you know, their common medications. And I just always cringe because that would be so easy to default. And granted, it's not a life-changing feature. It's not going to totally revolutionize your practice, but all these little things add up and all these helpful little tips and tricks, a couple of clicks on your meds, a couple of clicks using your chronic conditions versus doing an HPI on a, on a problem visit, and all that adds up to a little bit more time in your day. So moving on now, I'd like to talk a little bit about configuration in NextGen. In the last few versions, NextGen's given us some great configuration options. Um, you see the blue links here. These are called sub-navigation links, not to get too geeky on you. The gray tabs here are called pill tabs. Um, these are all configuration items. So in NextGen, there's kind of two things to be aware of, configuration and customization. 
customization is kind of a little bit of a scary thing where you're customizing your system. You're getting a little bit off the upgrade path, but you're basically saying, I'm going to agree to do this customization and keep up with it and keep a good list so that when I go to upgrade, because it's important that my providers or my users have this feature. Lots of people elect to customize and NextGen certainly supports that. But then there's this whole other thing that has come about within the last couple of years with NextGen called configuration. Every upgrade, it seems, NextGen has given us fantastic configuration tools. And every upgrade, we get more and more of these to where we have the opportunity to manage our system. We have the opportunity to configure our system to be more like what we need in our workflow and to tailor that end user experience to what suits my particular, your particular practices needs versus everybody having to work to accommodate a software. The software accommodates your workflow in a much better way. And so that's really what happens with these blue sub navigation links. I'm going to talk a little bit about those. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about this procedures pop up down here and how we can tailor that as well to your particular practices needs. So everything I'm showing you in the presentation today, nothing is customization. This is all configuration and you are encouraged to use these features, change these links, make it what you need to make it in order to support your specific workflow. So you can kind of see up here standing orders, immunizations, the different options that I have. You have seven slots for the gray button, and you have seven slots for the blue sub-navigation links. You only have seven. We can't give you any more. You can have less, but you can't have any more. So since I already have seven here on my soap, let's say I want to put something like screening tools. In order for me to get to, this is something I do all the time with practices I work with. In order for me to get to screening tools, if you use those often, I have to do one click to navigation, a second click to scroll down, and a third click to click screening tools. So it takes me three clicks just to get to where I would like to go for screening tools. So why not take one of these blue sub navigation links, maybe something I don't use that often, and replace it with screening tools so that it's one click away versus three clicks away. Not only does it say clicks, it also kind of puts it to the forefront here where you're visually seeing it as potentially a reminder that, oh, you need to go there and do that. So it's kind of twofold. It's a little bit of a reminder system as well as a convenience and click saver. Now, the tricky thing with adding something to the sub navigation link, and I, I, I am not a very technical person at all. I've worked on NextGen for more years than I care to tell you, but I'm not very technical, okay? But the one little bit of a technical thing you have to do here is you have to know the template name in order to link up something in the sub navigation. So in the sub navigation, what you're seeing here is whatever somebody chose to name it. I could have named this Shauna's link. And when you click on it, it'll launch whatever template. You get to choose what you want this name to be. But it has to be the template name. So when you talk about templates, there are two different things that you need to know. One is this is the display name. The display name is what you see in the application. That's what's visible to the end user. That's a pretty name that's in common lingo. Most of the time it's in proper case. It looks nice. So the display name is screening tools. But that's not necessarily the template name of this template. And we will need the template name in order to update this blue sub navigation link. So I'm going to hop into template editor for just a quick minute and get that template name. So if I choose to open up a template, I can type in the name just as it showed on the template. But remember, I told you that pretty name was the display name. So I have to change my radio button to display name, and there's my template. All I have to do is open it in template editor. I'm not going to do anything in template editor. I just need to get the name. And the name of this template is depression underscore screening underscore alert. So that's all I had to do in template editor. I just had to get that actual template name. Now, just a quick little tip. If you don't use template editor much, always close your template before you log out of the editor because that will cause a little bit of a log. So just a quick little tip there if you don't use it much. But now that I have the template name, I can go in and update these sub-navigational links and make this my own through configuration, NextGen provided configuration. So I'm going to go up to File, System Practice Template, and I'm going to go to Star Configuration Home. 
I'll tell you, there's other ways to get to this, but I use that star configuration home exclusively. I love that template. Since NextGen has given us that combined template, most of what you need on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be found here. So um, this is a great, great place to start and be familiar with. So I have to put in three things. I have to put in the specialty, and the specialty that I'm using is family practice. Then I have to choose my visit type. So I'm gonna scroll down here and choose my visit type of office visit. Remember, that's what I was doing there. Family practice, office visit. And then when I go to office visit, I was working on the soap template, right? So once you pick your specialty, your visit type, and the tab that you're on, you see those seven sub-navigation links listed here. Well, when I look at those, I can see them here. And, you know, maybe I don't need PEDS immunization because if I'm working in family practice, I'm probably not seeing too many kiddos. I'd probably be working under pediatrics, maybe. If that's not right, that's okay. I'm just kind of using that as an example. You do whatever you see fit. But for today's purposes, I'm going to replace PEDS immunization with my screening tools. So all I have to do is a really simple process. All I have to do is come down here to my sub nav three and change this. And I'm tempted to go with Shauna's template, but I'll stay, stay with what I should here and go with screening tools, um, which is probably the common name that we would know what to call it. And now I have to get that wonky actual template name that is not as pretty. And that was depression underscore screening underscore alert. Remember that template name that we looked up in template editor. So basically, I just replaced the PEED stuff with my screening tools. Now, one little trick here, when you're doing anything with your tabs, you have to click the update button that is present in that section of the template. And you see now it changed to screening tools here. So with just a quick refresh of the SOAP template, these changes on your framework content template, these configuration items are immediate, I mean, real time in the system with just one refresh, just to close and reopen. And you're gonna see my new sub-navigation link here. See, PEDS immunization's gone. It replaced with screening tools just as I wanted. And now I get my screening tools pop up. Next year, I have a question this. for you. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear? Sorry, um, can you configure multiple visit types and specialties simultaneously? Or again, is this something that, that's wishful? No, you can copy. You have this copy option up here. You kind of have to get one set up as the model and then you can copy it. You have some options there to do some copy. So just be careful. Um, I definitely try that in test and make sure it works out like you want it to. But yeah, you've got some options to, to pass that around if you've got a configuration that you really like. Any other questions, Holly, while we're paused here? Just that one, we're good. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. So just um, just with those few, it didn't take long at all. I mean, I'm sitting here talking for a long time and it probably took us five minutes. That would literally take 30 seconds if you were sitting there just doing it at your desk. And now instead of three clicks, I get it in one click. And if it's something that you're wanting your providers to do or your team members to do, depending on who's doing the documentation, now it's right there at their fingertips, top of mind, within their eyesight, their vision to remind them to do it as well. So NextGen provides us all this great configuration. Don't be scared of it. Take advantage of it. It's yours for the taking. You have an amazing software system in NextGen. Take advantage of these features and these configuration auto options that they give you. There's no tax on them. All this stuff upgrades with you. You don't have to keep a list. You don't have to really um, document that it was done other than to let people know and do the communication within the practice that now you have this great feature available with one click instead of having to do three. And depending on what you need, you know, this could be done a variety of different ways, but definitely make this your own and uh, put the features up there that are gonna enhance your providers or your care team's workflows. Now, All I'm right. gonna go I have another question. And... Okay, go ahead. Would these configurations and features stay once we upgrade to other versions or would they have to re-enter them? They do. The ideal, the idea is when you do these configuration things over on this framework, you know, any of these system practice templates, that that's going to upgrade with you. Now, you know how it is from time to time, things, you know, can break with the upgrades like anything. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't want you to be mad at me if that happens to be the one thing that doesn't work well in the next upgrade. But by design, 
those are designed to upgrade with you. And, you know, you could certainly test that when you do like your test or your alternate environment upgrade. But yeah, by design, these are supposed to upgrade with you. So it'll carry with you and you just double check that when you're testing your next upgrade, it, it should be there for you. So moving down the template, doing something very similar with procedures, you have areas of the system where you can do this configuration. I mean, there's several different areas of the application. I'm just, you know, scratching the surface. There's DB pick list. There's all different things that you can do to really tailor your system and make it your own and make it convenient for you. So I'm just showing you a few to get your wheels turning. Um, but when you look at procedures based on your specialty, this is a list of procedures that that specialty would commonly do. Now, if you go to your procedures at the top, this is all the procedures that basically NextGen offers, everything in the application. But all of those may not be, you know, what you want for your specialty. So you have the opportunity to, again, configure or tailor this list to be exactly what you want. And I love doing this kind of thing because just these small things will make your workflow so much more convenient for your providers. So on that same framework content, where we were just changing your blue sub navigation links, just keep scrolling down. You're going, these are all configuration options. So if anything is catching your eye, make a little mental note to go take a peek at this in your test system and try it out. But let's say, for example, um, your clinic does a lot of laceration repairs. Well, when you come to this pick list, laceration repair is here. But if you go to the big one, it is there. It's listed here. And so it's like, well, I want that convenient. I want something that I do a lot, all the things that I do a lot to be on my short pick list available for me here. So the way to configure that, again, is in your framework content. I can come here and I can just add that to the list. So I can, again, this is uh, naming it whatever I want. So if there's something that would be better, if you prefer it to, you know, call it something different, sutures, whatever, you could put that in there. This is your common name just for your practice, so it doesn't affect anybody else. In all of your procedure templates, start with PROC, and then I'm just going to go down to PROC laceration and find what I need in the application. Oh, I passed it right there. Okay. So I can just click add, and now that laceration repair is going to be there. So with a quick refresh, I could, with a quick refresh, I could close and reopen. I'm just clicking to finalize and clicking back. Same thing as closing and reopening, but just a quick refresh. It's immediate. It's in my system and ready for me to use just that quick. But now I'm looking at it and I'm not real happy because all these others are in alphabetical order and that's kind of stuck at the bottom. So let's go fix that. So what I can do is one, I can just say sort alphabetically and put that laceration repair right up in the mix, or maybe we do a lot of that, and I wanna move it to the first spot. So I'm gonna say change order, and the system's gonna walk me through the steps. Select the row to move. So I'm gonna click laceration repair. This says select new position. I'm gonna put it at the top of my list. Maybe I like that a little better. However I put that in there, that's what it's gonna be for me. So again, just set it up however you want. I tend to like alphabetical order because I think, you know, everybody might have an opinion on how they want them ordered. But I mean, to each their own, if you want to put them in a different order, group them by like topics or something like that, the the world is your oyster. Go for it. Because all this, all this configuration is yours and it's only for your practice. I can't stress that enough. Take advantage of it and set that up however it makes sense. I'm going to put mine alphabetically because a lot of us use this database and people get a little upset with me when I do a lot of tinkering and change things up. So I'm going to put that back and make it alphabetical. But again, these are all configuration steps available for you. Um, depending on your version, it, it may or may not be there if you're on a particularly older version, but anything in the last couple of years, you're going to have all these features and functions that I've been showing you today. Now, unfortunately, our time is winding down. So I had a few things, my phrase management, adding labs and patient images to a document and addendums that unfortunately I got a little long winded and didn't get to today, but they will be in your um, materials that are emailed out to you afterwards. If you look over that and have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to help. And I will certainly pause now and see if there are any other questions or anything else that I could try to help answer for you related to next gen.
All quiet so far. Everybody speak up if you'd like in the chat box. <laughs> Anybody would like to be unmuted to ask a question, we'd be happy to do that as well. If you'd like to just ask something rather than typing it in. And um, if so, just please uh, put that in the chat as well. I know Holly would be happy to unmute you. Ha ha ha. Somebody saying a, a personal hello to you, Shauna. <laughs> Aww. Hey From guys. Leslie it's in so Thompson, Nevada. Oh my goodness, that is a friend from a long time ago. Wow, yep. great to see your name again, Leslie, and thank you for joining today. That really means a lot to me. <laughs> we worked together years ago. Um, but yeah, um, that, that's all the, unfortunately, I had a few more things to, to cover, and I'm so sorry I didn't get to them all, because any of you that know me, I get excited about things and love to talk about this stuff and help you out. Um, hopefully, you got some good tips today. And again, the things that I didn't get to cover will be in the um, PowerPoint that is emailed out or probably be a PDF that's emailed out after the presentation. So look over that. There's some great little tips and tricks, hidden gems, a few more in there that we didn't get to cover today, but they'll be in the materials. And any questions at all that you have, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and uh, let us know how we can help you make your system, use these features that NextGen provides us to make your system better for you, more efficient, more convenient, more tailored to your specific workflow. That's what it's designed to do. So don't, don't be scared, jump in there, do some configuration and make this thing better for your end users. I know they would appreciate it and hey, it'll, it's, it's um, always a win-win when we can, you know, save a few clicks and make things more convenient. So. Thank you again for joining today. I'm going to hang out for a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, feel free to um, request to be unmuted. I'd be happy to entertain those. Um, but otherwise, we'll we'll call it a day for today. And again, thank you again for joining. Very much appreciate your time. And everybody stay safe during this challenging time in our nation. Thank you all. Okay, well, with no other questions coming in, we're going to go ahead and end the webinar. I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Thank you for joining.